Welcome food lovers to Neri's Kitchen. Today we are honored to have such a talented and extraordinary celebrity chef in our community. He is a highly skilled, intuitive and creative chef whose cuisine blends his upbringing, training, travel, experimentation and most importantly, his passion for cooking food. He believes that food tastes better when it's shared with others in a warm, welcoming environment. We are so excited to be making a salmon dish from his culinary experience. Let's give a warm welcome to Chef Rob Thomas. Hi everyone, yeah. thank you, and thank you Neri for having me on your yes, show. Yes, thank you for coming on board. <laughs> and, and as you said, um, I do think that, uh, that food is better when it's shared in, the, uh, in a warm and welcoming environment, so thank you for inviting me into your awesome. warm and welcoming environment. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> so, so what are we making today? Okay, so um, I'm a big fan of seafood. Um, I love fish, but okay. I also love the nutrients that come along with it. Okay. Uh, so today, uh, we are making a tomato chipotle coconut salmon dish. Wow, that sounds very flavorful. So you said tomato coconut chipotle salmon. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, it's really easy and uh, I'd love to get started. Um, maybe if you could grab me maybe a, a pot. I'm just sure. going to use to your kitchen. And we're just probably going to get a little bit of rice started. Um, I like that. I like that. Um, there's so many different things that go with salmon, um, but I think rice goes very well with a dish like this just because there's a little bit of heat in that chipotle and you want that rice to kind of help tone it down. Can you use something else other than rice too? Yeah, you know what, like this is something that you can do this dish on its own. You, mm -hmm. can, you can have it with a salad. It's very saucy, so I wouldn't plate it in the oh, same. Oh, right, yes. But, um, you need that rice to absorb all that sauce, right? To absorb right? all the sauce, yeah. right? But, you know, um, there's no rules here. Mm -hmm. uh, eat it how you like it uh, and just make sure you make it to your taste. And, exactly. And enjoy. Well, I love rice, so let, let's bring it on. <laughs> okay. So uh, I have uh, have about a cup of rice here. Um, I've, I've pre-washed it and then just let it sit and uh, it looks a little bit more dry now, but been pre-washed so that's a cup there and you know it's just a simple ratio two to one water to rice so we got one cup do you always pre-wash your rice and then let it dry um or for today you just did just that? for today oh, okay just for just for today um you know uh it's i guess the jury's out on on washing rice because i know some people some people really do, and some yeah. people really don't. Um, this rice was just, it's actually, it's actually just a very, very starchy rice. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to take, uh, I guess, a tiny bit of it out so it wasn't so sticky. Got it. Yes. Okay. Right, but there's some rices that when you wash them, it actually changes the cooking time as well. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Jasmine rice is one of those. Okay. So uh, we have our measurement in there. I'm just gonna add couple pinches of salt and if you can assist me on just bringing this up to a boil okay and once it hits boil um, we're gonna turn it down to a simmer and then we're gonna cover it and then it's gonna cook for about 20 minutes okay so I'm gonna put it at a nine is that a good heating yep. setting okay yep and again we're just waiting to to bring it up um, what are your favorite types of rice you know I just use white rice I use the rooster brand rice I guess it's the Thai rice. Um, rooster. Uh, I don't Can't know. It's, it's the rooster, the rooster brand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I've actually used other brands uh -huh. where it was like, you know, compliments, Superstore brand. Mm -hmm. And I was like, shamed. It's like, why aren't you using the rooster yeah. brand rice? I'm like, okay, I only use rooster, but I use all kinds of brands. Did, did you grow up on rooster? Yes. That's why, yeah. right? I think that, um, <laughs> you know, uh, what, what we grew up on heavily influences Absolutely. us uh, today. So, um, while this is is going, I'm gonna I'm gonna start getting this pan hot because we want this cast iron to be very hot. Oh, yeah, there you go. There we go. You know what? I think you're the first person. The first man, actually, the first man on this show that's actually used the stove without asking me, right? <laughs> we had someone actually comment on it last week. Mm -hmm. 
It was Ashley. She said that, oh, because men don't know how to use the stove. So, Ashley, you're wrong. Chef Rob knows how to use the stove. I, you know, um, uh, part of part of what I do is actually going into people's homes and 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 cooking. Um, you know, uh, multi-course dinners. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's. Uh, you know, like past hors d'oeuvres and, okay. you know, just for different types of functions. So I've gotten used to a whole bunch of different types of brands. Okay. Um, because different companies kind of set up their, their systems a little bit differently. Right. So now I feel like I can walk into any kitchen and no matter what the make is, mm -hmm. I can figure it out. So you do private, is it private parties and you cook for private parties and yes. private... I guess business functions also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how much notice would people need to give you? Well, um, I don't really like doing things on too short a notice, like within within a few days. Right. Um, but you know, I I always just say, uh, as soon as you know, okay. you let me know, and Got I will it. always do my best to get. Okay. To so you. this rice is starting to boil. Okay. Is this good? Yeah. So then we lower it. Yeah, it was just kind of clumping a little bit. There we go. All right, so it's coming to a boil, and uh, then we just need to cover it and, okay. and turn it down a little bit. Sure. Okay, this must kill you, right? It's so messy in here. No, it's fine. You know what? I I, I, I have to be the first to admit, um, most people think just because I'm a chef that I have, like, this huge, grand kitchen at home. It's... Uh, it's a regular home kitchen, and I just make sure that it works for me. Wonderful. Okay, so this is this is getting hot. So I'm going to start with getting these seasoned. Want to grab some salt? Oh, okay. Okay, just grab it, pinch, take oh, a pinch. Oh, just pinch? Yep, season it. Season from above, higher oh, up. Higher up? Higher up. Like all of it? Yeah, all of it. Okay, need I need more salt. Pinch? Yeah. All right, you do it higher, so that way it's evenly seasoned. Yeah. That's not enough salt, right? Uh, do one more. Yeah, let's pinch. do more. Do one more pinch. There we go. Okay, and stay there because we still we got to do the pepper. Oh, okay. Okay, so have you ever heard of the salt bay? Yes. What do you think of salt bay? Okay, so that was um, it was it was kind of more I guess like um. I guess like an internet uh, or like a an Instagram mm -hmm. social media type mm -hmm. of thing that he was doing. Um, it seemed it seemed very gimmicky, but you know what? I don't know. I haven't had his food. Okay. Um, they're, they're Wait, having... he's a chef? Yeah. I didn't know that. I yeah. thought he's just like, you know, the salt. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was just some guy who walks around with like yeah. a bag of salt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's how he seasoned his food, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he just kind of just came up with a creative way to... Um, to um, demonstrate. to demonstrate and stand out, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but his thing is actually um, it's actually meat. It's steak. Oh, right. So he actually has steak houses in uh, in Turkey and Miami. Oh, okay. Didn't know there that. we go. Season from above. Season from above. There we go. This time you got it. There. One more little pinch. See, I can't even see the salt. <laughs> I can see it. I'm keeping. You can see it. Okay. Me. Okay. And then next, we'll hit we'll hit the pepper on there. Okay. From above. There I can see go. the pepper now. Yeah. So there we go. Season from above. Now, I'm going to get a little bit of, of oil in here. Now, we want to make sure and, uh, and, and generously, generously coat the bottom of that pan. Um, make sure that it is very, very hot. Um, now I noticed that you're using a cast iron pan. Yes. Why do you, do you love cast iron pans? Because I've never used it before. I've always just used these induction pans, but I always hear about cast iron this, cast iron that. You know, cast iron is fantastic. Um, for one, if you do have an induction top, mm -hmm. cast iron works on every single induction top, so you don't have to get um, any new equipment. Um, before we dig into the cast iron, since we're talking about induction, um, not everyone is familiar with induction. Um, it does run on electrical current, but it's uh, it's almost like magnetized. So if I turned on this burner right here, mm -hmm. I can crank it all the way and nothing is going to happen. Really? But as soon as it reacts with the metal, that's why you have to have certain oh. types of pots and pans. To okay. Go on it. Then it actually heats up the um, the vessel, not the actual element. Got it. Didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make sure this is 
this oil is nice and hot. This pan is getting hot. I'm probably not going to be able to grab that uh, that handle too much longer. Okay. But we're going to start. This is beautiful pieces of of salmon. It looks a little bit like light pink, but uh, this is not farm salmon. Actually, this is actually king salmon. What's the difference? Oh, a huge difference. So king salmon is probably the most healthy type of salmon that you can get. Uh, it is very fatty. Uh, it's the highest in, in omega mm -hmm. and it has a really great flavor. Okay. Right. So your Atlantic farmed is probably like the least quality. Right. I heard that right? the farm salmon is probably the least quality salmon. You want wild. Yes. You want wild. Never heard of king. Yes, yeah, so this is wild king salmon, okay. and then there's other, there's also um, uh, coho salmon mm -hmm. uh, and sockeye salmon. Okay. So coho salmon has a little bit of a milder flavor, uh, still fatty, mm -hmm. um, some great omegas, and then your sockeye salmon will be the least fatty, uh, some really great omegas, and a very strong flavor. Okay. Yeah. So while that's simmering, I'm just going to wash my hands here. Sure. And I like how you placed the salmon because I was watching you. It was so gentle. Like you really took care of the salmon. Please. You have to. You have to? You have to. I just dump it gently. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I respect all the ingredients that go into every single dish. You know, it's funny that you say that because we did um, a sushi series okay. and the chef respected all of the ingredients. He took care of every ingredient and um, because he, he wanted the highest quality possible, right? Was so that he, with... Um... That was with Cho. Cho from yes, Wasabi. Cho from, you yes. know Cho? Yes, I know oh, Cho. Oh, wow. Um, you know, great businessman, very great chef. Um, Cho, if you're, Cho watching. if you're watching. <laughs> yeah, he, he knows his stuff. Yes, he does. He knows his stuff. He's he's definitely uh, taught me a thing or two uh, about the ingredients that he uses. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I could I could definitely see him doing that. Now, Rob, how long have you been cooking for? I have been cooking for for over 25 years. Over 25 years? Yeah. Oh my goodness. And did I, and, did and you I'm 43, know? So You're I've 43? Cooking, I've been okay. cooking most of my life. But did you know that you wanted to be a chef? You know, at some point I did. Um, it wasn't the first thing um, that I that I thought of, but um, I always loved I always loved cooking mm -hmm. um, after a certain age. Uh, oh, quick story, I was actually uh, a very picky eater. Really? And yeah, and I was... Uh, I was, when it came to like getting me to eat anything, uh, my parents had a very hard time as a young child. Um, you know, my mother uh, showed me a little bit more about what it is to, to cook and uh, cook for the family and, um, you know, what just goes into cooking a meal. And then I started getting a lot more interested in, in food. And you grew up with salmon, you said? No, seafood. You know what? Funny thing is, again, I actually hated fish. What? I hated <laughs> everything. Look at this, right? That's that's like maybe about a minute on that side, and we're getting some really great. A nice sear. A really nice sear. That. You look at this spatula that I'm using, this is, this is specifically used for fish. You can use it for something else, but this is what actually just kind of helps it uh, get under, get underneath there. I love it. I've only seen chefs use that actually. I used to watch Rachel Ray a lot because okay. I used to be on mat leaves mm -hmm. not too long ago and she would use something like that too. And she would always sprinkle from above sprinkle above, no, over her shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a superstition there, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I think that, um, you know, every chef does a lot of things differently, but there's just certain things that uh, like your training teaches you. Mm -hmm. um, again, like the seasoning from above, right. um, placing things properly mm -hmm. while you're cooking them, um, using the proper 
tool right. for the job. So these are all the things that kind of lead to um, the success of, uh, of, of a great dish, great restaurants and everything. So it's really the foundation. Um, how's that rice doing? Let's check. Yeah, looks like it's doing good. Doing good? Okay. Yeah. Is it still, is it too high or it's a good temperature? I think it's a good temperature. Okay. I always use the rice cooker. That's why I don't, I rarely use the pot. Well, you know what? I, it's, that's actually, it's a really good learning experience, even though I know it's just cooking rice, because you know what, what happens if the rice cooker is exactly is, is broken one day. And you know what? I'm actually horrible at cooking rice on a rice cooker. Really? And I know it should be very automatic. I actually prefer doing it in the pan. All right. So that, some... that wasn't too long at all. No, because this it actually isn't fully cooked. Okay. So what we're doing here is we want it just to give it a good, just some just some good color on on each side. And then it it looks it looks cooked, but it's still a little bit raw in the middle. And I'm just gonna scrape up a few of these little these little bits right here just because this stuff is going to burn okay so um now we're going to start building that sauce so we're going to start off with some some onions is this half a cup this is about half a cup of half a cup? Okay. That's a good eye. <laughs> now, Chef Rob, who inspired you to become a chef? You know what? Um, one of one of my biggest inspirations to become a chef actually was uh, was was my mother. Um, like I said, she. She uh, influenced uh, me in a way that, that actually got me into cooking. Okay. Um, and it actually got me eating. I okay. think that was the goal was actually Right, because you were a picky eater. But <laughs> it actually it actually got me um, it actually got me cooking as well. Um, there's been a lot of chefs that I've um, that I've met that I've worked with um, that uh, that have inspired me. Um, my guests, my clients, people that I that I cook for inspire me. And, uh, and challenge me to to always, you know, be better, do better. Mm -hmm. So I think my influence has come from a lot of different places. Okay, so these onions, um, they're they're getting a little bit translucent now. Um, still have a little bit more cooking to do, but we can start looking at some of the uh, some of the other ingredients. Okay, ginger time. Have you ever peeled ginger? With a knife, yes. With a knife? <laughs> With a knife, yep. I know, I, I just take my cutting board, place the ginger there, and I just slice the skin off. So what if I told you there was an easier way? What if I told you that you could peel it with a spoon? I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> I've never tried it with a spoon. All right, I'm just gonna do this one little part okay. and then I'll let, and let you finish it. If okay. you look at it like this, you just have your spoon and you just scrape it. Look at that. Look at that. Just the skin so it's comes just off. Just the skin, not the flesh. Yeah. So if you mind, just from where it is, just maybe just keep okay. on scraping. Okay. Oh, so you just do it this way? Yeah, either way. Oh, it's so much easier. Right. And you're barely getting any of. Yeah. You're yeah. not wasting the ginger. You don't have to. You don't have to put a ton of pressure on it. I thought you did. No, the skin just comes right off. That's so easy, and then you can get actually into the little curves too. Yeah. Oh, I love this. Okay, how much should I peel then? Just that, that is good. And then this part right here, I want oh. to scrape that part off too. You scrape it off? Yeah, you can scrape it just like. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was very tough. Okay. Okay, Jerome. Yeah. <laughs> too close, too close. <laughs> that's, what we, that's what we do. That's what you do. <laughs> okay, I don't know if that's good enough. I would just cut that part off now. No, that's a, I, I, you know what? It is good enough. I, I am. A, I'm going to clean a little bit of it yes. because I'm, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I felt nervous because Jerome was right in there. 
There's Jerome always making people nervous. Yes. <laughs> All right. So then we just want to start. This is a um, this is called a microplane, wow. and you can see that it just pretty much just grates the. Uh, the ginger. While I'm doing this, can I get you to stir these onions? Absolutely. A bit? Getting a little bit brown on the bottom, oh. which is which is okay. But it adds flavor, doesn't it? It adds flavor. That is what we call the uh, fond. How do you say it? Fond. The fond. F O N D. The fond. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fond. All right. So we got some ginger in there. Keep stirring. You're doing good. Oh, okay. Keep stirring. I'm stirring. <laughs> um, and then we have some some garlic. If you notice, I didn't add the garlic right away. Because it would burn. Yes. Okay. I feel like you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, recipes that call for adding the garlic too early. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then it just ends up with being like a little bit of like a like a like a bitter. Got taste. it. Look Dang. at this. This looks so good already. And it's just onions. Yeah. Here comes the uh, tomato part. So this is this is actually just like finely chopped tomatoes, like from a can. Um, you can use fresh tomatoes. Uh, I prefer using the tomatoes for a can from this because it just comes out a little bit uh, a little bit softer. Is it just called um, diced tomatoes or? Chopped tomatoes. Oh, chopped tomatoes. But it's so fine. It's so fine. It's actually called finely chopped tomatoes. Really? Yeah. Because when you said chopped tomatoes, I thought you actually took a tomato and then grated it. I've seen people do that to get it very fine. Absolutely. Absolutely, you can. Um, I just, I also like to kind of just cook with what I have, with what I have at, at home, um, especially when I'm doing demos. Um, you know, sometimes uh, there's just a few steps that just kind of make it easier for, uh, for, for people. So um, this just has to cook a little bit. Um, do you have a wine glass? I do, I do. Um, it's just over here. I can't reach it though, so you might have to get it for me. Okay. Just so over there. <laughs> be between you and RJ, who who reaches for the wine glasses in here? What do you? That's why it's up there because we, we can't reach do? it. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, so. Reason why I asked for wine glasses, I'm, I'm going to have a little bit of a glass of, of wine. I like to um, sometimes when I cook. Um, but first, uh, I actually usually like buying like these kind of like little cartons um, for when I'm cooking because I don't always need a full bottle of wine. Um, and then we're just going to, we are, we are going to let that cook out. Uh, maybe let's get this up a little bit higher. There we go, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pour myself a little. Do it. Have a little treat for the chef. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's three forty. Do right. it. Three forty. <laughs> we're cooking. We're cooking salmon. We're live right. on Mary's kitchen. We're live, right. Let's let's have a good time. That's why they call it Sunday Fun Day, right? Exactly. Guys, if you're watching, please let me know and give me a thumbs up. <laughs> All right, so we're smelling that wine, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, the reason why we added the wine, because it does add some flavor. Um, it helps us kind of take up that little bit of that fond that yes. was on, on the, the bottom. Um, but we are cooking out the alcohol, right? So I think that's something that's, uh, that's very important to, to note because, um, you know, not everybody drinks. Right. Um, you know, for, for whatever reason. So you want to make sure and cook with that wine. Now I have some, this is, this is some chopped up chipotles. Now chipotles are, um, are smoked jalapenos. And then the way that we usually get them here is in a can. So it's in an adobo sauce, which has a little bit of, of vinegar to it as well. So you're getting, do you like spicy food? Uh, yes, yes okay. and no. 
Yes and no. Okay, so yes, I do. However, I've been sharing my food with my kids, so I don't eat spicy anymore. Okay. Um, so, so my it, tolerance is not as high as it used to be, but I do like spicy. Well, we're going to see how this goes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to see how this goes. Yeah, so that's some ch 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 chopped chipotles. They usually come in a can. It's got like a really nice, it's got like a really nice smoky flavor to it smoky and and it adds some spice this one shouldn't be too spicy because you know we have the tomatoes in here and everything mm -hmm. as well can you oh smell i can that? smell it oh right. my goodness i just got a whiff so of it meal. right that mm -hmm. smells so mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. i'm smelling the wine <laughs> I, I smell the wine and the chili you got, a, you got a little you got a little bit of both <laughs> all right so now i'm going to add this this coconut cream here I just love coconut. Anything with coconut just tastes so good. Yeah, you know, it, it, it really does. Um, coconut is one of my favorite um, in, ingredients. Um, I use it in a lot of different dishes. It's so versatile. And look at that. Look at this color that we're starting to get here now. Looks beautiful. I love it. Right, we want that we want that temperature to uh, to come up. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna grab this this salmon now. Pardon my hands. My hands are clean, by the way. <laughs> throw that in there. Even these even these other little bits. Oh yeah, don't waste anything. <laughs> nothing is being wasted. I'm just gonna give my hands a quick wash here. How's our rice doing too? I think it looks okay. Yeah. I got a question about. Can you use chicken broth instead of white wine? Yes, you can. Yes, chicken broth definitely works. Um, That's a great question. It is a great question. Um, you know, when it comes to to adding liquid to um, to dishes, um, you know, you can you could have we could have used uh, chicken stock in in, in the, the rice, rice as well. Um, but when it comes to to you know deglazing the pan, that's what we call when you get the fond off of it. Um, it doesn't have to be wine. Uh, you can use chicken stock. You can even you can even use water. Use whatever suits you best. So would there be a taste taste difference? There would be a little bit of a taste difference. Um, but again, if you don't want wine, then can you do whiskey? You know what? <laughs> depending on the dish, depending on the dish, you can, yeah, you can for do bananas, whiskey. right? Bananas. Yeah, yeah. Whiskey, even Dessert? for steak. Yeah. Oh, really? For steak, it works really oh, well. Oh, you know too. what? We did have a steak dish, and we had we used whiskey in the sauce. Yeah. I, d I forgot about that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this dish down a little bit. Maria's coming over. Oh, Maria Dushnitsky is coming over. Maria, come over anytime. You are definitely welcome. And this, right? Like that. Now I'm just gonna, I just kind of like basting it and just kind of spooning this, spooning this over. Now, Chef Rob, what do you typically eat at home? You know what? I actually do eat like this at home. Um, it's, um, I don't, I don't usually go too fancy. Um, I like to, I actually really like to eat healthy. Okay. I, I, I really do. Um, I, I do eat a lot of, uh, I do eat a lot of salmon. Um, I eat a lot of um, uh, chicken, like when it comes to like your, your, uh, your animal proteins. Um, I actually really try and focus more on vegetables these days. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a very important part of, uh, of our diets. Mm -hmm. Um you you don't need as much um, meat as, uh, as you know as, as we consume right you know so um, yeah I just try and keep it uh, light and uh, and nutritious but that's not saying that I can't cook like some mean ribs or something like oh that, I believe you, know? you. <laughs> um, do you meal prep you know what I don't you don't okay I don't um, I used to mm -hmm. um, I just I don't so much anymore um, uh, because I'm I'm kind of in a, in and out of, uh, of of my house, so I usually have uh, a lot of time to just 
make something. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, but in regards, I guess it can can be considered a meal prep if I just kind of just make something for the next day. But I don't, mm -hmm. I don't like lay it out and like meal prep. Oh yeah, for... you don't do your batch cooking. You don't have your Tupperwares. <laughs> no, no. But you know what? That isn't hard. I had a client before that uh, that I was actually doing uh, the meal prep um, uh, for her, mm -hmm. and she always said, you know what? I don't think I can do this myself. Like, how do you? How does one do this? So how does time? one do it then? Because we have a lot of people, um, actually people from our gym, they want to know how to meal prep, right? Mm -hmm. And how can you make it as easy as possible to meal prep? It's timing. So you know what, this is the, for one, set up your menu. Okay. Right. Um, two, when it comes to things that are going in the oven, that's how I would break it down, right? Like if you have like, whether it's you're roasting your vegetables or if you're any roasting any proteins, mm -hmm. you start looking at whatever is going in the oven, mm -hmm. you set your oven to that temperature, everything that's being roasted gets cooked at the same time. Oh, okay. Everything that's being on your stovetop gets cooked at the same time, Okay. right? While those are cooking, you still have to keep an eye on it. That's when you can do all your salads, all your chopping and everything and stuff like that. Okay. Seems like you're kind of bouncing all over the place. But, but you're not though, there's a system. There's a Plan system. ahead, roast what you need to roast, cook what you need to cook, and then start chopping and if you need chopping. to chop your salads. Exactly. That seems so, so easy. Once you finish yeah. all three of those tasks, all there's two steps left, assembly and cleanup. Yes. Cleanup we can do the next day, but assemble. <laughs> <laughs> yes, assembling is, is, is a big part. So look at this, now we have this, um, you know, we can look at this. The sauce has gotten a little, a little thicker. Um, I am going to take a little, a little taste. Don't mind if I do. That's incredible. I so, noticed you didn't season it at all too. Some really good heat. You know what? I, I don't think it really needs anything. Okay. Um, but you don't want to just keep on over seasoning and over right, seasoning. Right, right. I know that, um, the, those tomatoes, mm -hmm. there's salt in there. Okay. There is salt in there. Mm -hmm. And I don't like my food over salty. So there was enough salt in there. Um, the chipotles had like a little bit of oh, uh, right. a vinegar mm -hmm. in there and everything. So, um, you really have to, to taste. Um, and if it's not within your taste, like if you were to taste this and, and be like chef Rob, I think this. I think this needs more salt. Then it's more salt to your liking. Got it. Right? Okay. Um, if you want it spicier, then you'd say, "Hey, you know what? I think I need a little more, a little bit more chipotle." But again, salt is one of those things that I I find that can be overused very very quickly. Right. And I heard that you should actually season at the end after you're done cooking because everything reduces, right? And then yeah. it'll be just if you did it beforehand, it might be too salty. Yes. So you season, you season in layers, you season in layers, you season in the, in the beginning, you season during a little bit, and then your final seasoning should come at the end after you've tasted. And then, you know, Hey, this is kind of where we're at. Are you, uh, are you hungry? Oh, I'm always hungry. <laughs> Jerome, are you hungry? I'm always hungry. Oh yeah. All right. Come on. You came to Go the right kitchen. <laughs> okay. I'm going to move some stuff around here and then um, I have some cilantro. Uh, do you like cilantro? Love cilantro. Finally. Yes. I love it. I love it. Well, I actually grew up with cilantro because okay. we use it a lot in Asian cooking. Yes. And we eat it um, in a lot of like vermicelli bowls and uh, in some sauces too. Mm -hmm. So love it. Sandwiches you know too. So many people um, don't like cilantro and they say it tastes like, soap. They say it tastes like soap. I don't know. I don't know where they get that from, but apparently that's it's a might be a genetic thing. But this is for all my all non cilantro lovers out there. <laughs> I'm gonna have some too. Mm. Mm. Oh. Delicious. How's it? Delicious. Mm -hmm. Refreshing. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Then with the wine. Then with <laughs> and the then wine, with the wine, wine. Yeah. <laughs> cilantro and wine. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to tear a little bit, just a little bit of cilantro. I'm going to leave a few sprigs here for garnish. 
Um, we can turn that pot off if you don't mind okay. giving me I'll a hand Okay, I'll turn it off. You know, I thought it was going to be hot. It actually wasn't too hot. It's not that bad. I don't know why I touched it, but yeah, it wasn't too bad. So I'm just going to... Chop this off, and where do you think this is going? On top? No! The rice? It's going in the rice. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. see, I knew that. I knew it. <laughs> I had to ask the trick question. I knew you were asking a trick question. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. I wasn't sure. No, I think it's good, right? Like, this is, again, if you are a cilantro lover, mm -hmm. this is a great way to just add, like, a little bit more life to your rice, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to overdo it. But just, you know, with cilantro, a little goes a long way. Um, if you have a spoon here. Ah, there we go. Can I pass you this? Just maybe give it a nice little nice little mix up there. Nice little fluff? Yeah. Okay. How does that look? That looks fantastic. Okay. See, and now, now you cook rice without the rice cooking. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. But you said it was a two to one ratio of water and rice? Yes. And then let it boil, and then once it boils, turn it down so that it, it can, so I guess, it, yeah, simmer, so it can steam? Simmer. Yep. Okay. See? There Easy peasy. Okay, so now if you could if you could give me like maybe like three plates. Sure. Because RJ's working hard over there too. We need to we, we need to feed him. That's right. We need to feed him. That's right. And we need to feed you too, Neri. <laughs> and I think that's, that's one thing that I actually really love about what I do. I love feeding people. Okay. Yeah. It makes yeah. you happy? It does. And did your mom grow up feeding people too? Uh, she, she, had, she, she fed the family. Um, she would cook if we had like extended family um, yeah. uh, gatherings as well. But, um, you know, I'm one of, I'm one of four boys. One of four boys. One of four oh boys. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Do you have any sisters? No sisters. So your mom had five boys. No, she had, she had, so she had four of us in total. Oh, oh, four yeah. boys. Oh she my goodness. She had four goodness. of us in total. And, um, you know, we're all, we're all pretty close in age. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when your little guy gets to be a teenager, you'll see exactly how much food he's eating. Oh, I see it now. Like, yeah. Like Jet, right? He used to not eat when he was... Up until three, but then the last year he's been eating so much food, and I can't believe how much food he's been eating. So yeah, they just keep on eating, and especially mm -hmm. like I said, when you get to that to being like that, those those teen years, you start eating a lot. I uh, <laughs> I still remember sometimes uh, uh, my dad looking in in the fridge and saying, "We just went grocery shopping," mm -hmm. right? but you know you got four four teeny boys, boys yep. <laughs> and we're just eating like everything. So let's, I think right now is a good time to plate up these dishes. Now again, you can, you can definitely serve this with, um, with a, with a vegetable. Um, I just did it with rice just to kind of just make it simple. It's kind of like more of like a serving, a serving suggestion. Do you know how much rice you get when you do um one cup of uncooked rice is it three cups three cups oh my goodness yes <laughs> and again that's, that's that's important that's to know pretty good <laughs> especially for those out there that are doing meal prep right okay so you need to know so whatever measurement of if rice is part of you know your meal prep mm -hmm. and you know you need a certain amount of cups knowing that one cup of rice equals three, three cups, cups. Cooked. but it also depends on your type of rice so Oh, yes. Okay, well, I use the Rooster Bran rice. The Rooster, <laughs> we know. We're getting next next show. I want. This is not Rooster Bran. No, it's not Rooster Bran. <laughs> Next, next show, I want to see. I want to see Rooster giving you guys a sponsor there. <laughs> yes, oh, Rooster, you're, contact me. <laughs> yeah, you, you've given him the shout out. You've given yeah. him the shout out. So, you know, it's funny that you say that because we did um, a show with Chapman's Ice Cream. Okay. And they saw the video mm -hmm. and they actually had notified us, and then we got some free coupons. Really? For ice cream, yes. Really, that sounds yeah. good. And I got some free uh, with ice cream socks, so I wore that proudly on uh, on our virtual training ice cream socks ice cream socks yeah okay. <laughs> ice cream mask too really yeah 
That's just that's just like a whole lot of that's a whole lot of ice cream. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I'm just gonna plate this up. If you don't mind grabbing me a um, a spoon, I want to get a, a spoon sure. just so I can spoon some of this sauce off of it. Okay, I'll give you a big spoon. Yeah, perfect. See, again, this dish came together very, very easy. Um, you know, this is something you, you could do this as a, as, as a meal prep dish. Um, I got to wipe these, these edges. Any other chefs out there are probably looking at it like, hey, man, <laughs> clean, up, clean, clean up, it your, up. Clean up your plates, man. Yeah. Clean up your plates. <laughs> Type of horse and pony show you running yeah. here, man. <laughs> like that. And then we're just going to get a little bit of that sauce. I like how you plated the salmon on an angle. Yes, it's, you know what, it's the whole plating of food um, and how I plate it, it's, uh, it's just something that I can't turn off. Whether I'm at home or, or anywhere else, I can't turn that off. So if you were at home, you would also plate it like this as well? Yep. Oh, okay. And would you put the garnish at home too? Um, depends. I, I probably would. Um, I probably would have snacked on it a lot more oh, while yeah. I was cooking. <laughs> but you know what? It makes it look pretty. And then when you create something so beautiful, you enjoy it more and it actually tastes better. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, at, uh, at, at, at home, I'm not, I'm not always just cooking for myself. You right. know, I'm sometimes cooking for myself and my partner. Okay. So, um, you know, you, uh, when you're cooking for other people, mm -hmm. you know, presentation is, uh, is, is very, very important. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to dig in. Artie, do you want to dig in with us? <laughs> let's do it. Okay. Let's dig in. All right. The salmon is nice and soft. That was good. Oh, I love that sauce. So creamy. I'm not a fish guy. Mm-hmm. Very mild fish taste. Mm-hmm. I can really taste the sauce. It's got a bit of a kick. Yeah, that's that mm -hmm. chipotle in there. You can take can you can you get a hint of that smokiness from it too? I can. What I really taste is the creamy. Mm-hmm. So like if I didn't know that you put coconut in there, I'd figure that there's some type of fat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like nice, yeah. soft. Richness. Simmery. Richness. Richness. That's exactly it is. Yeah. Rice, rice, rice. Boom. And I like it with the rice. I better save some for Jerome. <laughs> Make sure you save me some. Yeah. We'll <laughs> save some for Jerome. For a photo too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this will be our photo. Mm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very good. So good. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Chef Rob. Thank you. For coming into Neri's Kitchen. It was a pleasure. I learned so much from you. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Um, to, to everyone at the Fit Club, um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's an honor being your guest today. And you're going to come for a workout, right, Rob? Yeah, I'm going to come for a workout. <laughs> yeah, come for a workout. Awesome. Can people, how do people get a hold of you? What do you got? You got anything upcoming? You know what? Um, nothing um, upcoming as of yet, but um, you know, tune into uh, to to my Instagram. Um, I definitely share it to my Facebook page uh, as well. Uh, Instagram, you can find me as uh, as Chef Rob Thomas. I do a lot of cooking videos. Um, I post some recipes. Uh, I try and I just try and be like your culinary ambassador. So um, you know, follow, comment, share would all be appreciated. Wonderful. Well, thanks guys for tuning in and I'll see you next week. Bye now. Bye.